Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David and today we bring you a very special episode. For the past hundred years, one name has risen above the rest when it comes to defining weirdness, oddities, and adventure. That name is Robert Ripley. Robert Ripley opened his first exhibit of oddities in 1933 at the Chicago World Fair. Then in 1950, he started his first permanent exhibit in St. Augustine, Florida, which is where we are today with his museum behind me. We've decided that as we travel across the country, we're going to visit every single one of Ripley's museums and what better place to begin than at the very first one. So now, Let's delve into this wonderful, weird world. Come tag along. We're going to a place that you've never heard of before. It's We're now inside the castle, Mr. J.T. Sailors. This was actually one of the most popular performers at Ripley's original 1933 exhibit. So they have wax figures of him that you can find in almost every Ripley's location. But he's guiding the way this way, so let's check it out. One thing you can always expect from Ripley's is that you're going to be amazed. Take for example this clock here. The entire thing was built with clothespins. Absolutely incredible. That takes a massive amount of talent. Just like this portrait here of a lovely dog completely done with bottle caps. I don't know where else you can see something like this. There's plenty of unusual art at Ripley's, including this amazing portrait of John Lennon that is completely done with smoke. There's no charcoal, pen, pencil, anything in this. The artist held the pieces of paper out above the fire, catching that soot that came up, and created this entire painting. Or perhaps you prefer this rice straw portrait of Gandhi. Very, very interesting. We now begin our journey to the heart of the museum, down this hallway that mysteriously seems to shrink as we head down it. Here we have the door of mystery, and behind it are countless wonders. Believe it or not, everything in the museum is real, except for this. This is famously a hoax. This is the Fiji mermaid, and was made famous by none other than P.T. Barnum. Up until his old age, he insisted that this was the remains of a genuine mermaid. However, in his last years, he did confess that instead of a mermaid, this was actually the remains of half a monkey and half a fish. Robert Ripley thought this was a very amusing tale, and here's a very famous picture of him with the Fiji mermaid. The great thing about Ripley's is that whether it's everyday objects or some unique art, they always encourage you to look at things in a different way. One such example of something ordinary turned extraordinary is this yarn art here that creates a almost 3D portrait of Harry Potter, the boy who lived. For a bit of miniature art, we take a look at some matchbook portraits here all done on a matchbook and then these ones above it where they've actually incorporated the matches into the drawings to become the hands of the people that are in the portrait here's an incredible story ray wild mountain man murphy uses a chainsaw to make the smallest of carvings this is the chinese alphabet chiseled onto a pencil with a giant chainsaw. Just crazy. And if you wanted a brief musical interlude, 
we have some grasshoppers all outfitted to play only the hits. Just don't ask them to play the Beatles. They get a little sensitive about that one. Out of all the many things that Robert Ripley found on his journeys, the one that continued to fascinate him was man. He always found some of the most interesting folk in his travels, and a lot of them are represented in the museums today with gorgeous wax figures. There's a lot of them here, so let's see who we can meet. First up, we have the Lizard Man. His name is Eric Sprague from Kentucky, and he has spent his life modifying himself with tattoos and surgeries to become as lizard-like as possible, even getting his tongue that signature look. This is Perry Biddle, the human flag, who's able to hoist his body up just like a flag flapping in the wind. He was still able to perform this feat even on his 90th birthday. I don't think I could do that even now. Someone truly eye-popping, the Eyeball Popper. This gentleman was actually able to dislocate his eyeballs to pop them out. Now this may be what a lot of people look like as they walk around Ripley's, but very few can get their eyes out as far as this. A true story of perseverance, Johnny Eck was born with only half a body. When he was born, the doctor said he'd only live about a day, but he ended up having a full life and managed to become an actor, a musician, a juggler, and even a tight rope walker. Way to go, Johnny. And then someone you might miss if he was standing sideways, Edward Hagner, better known as the Skeleton Dude. He grew to a height of five foot seven, but only weighed 48 pounds. Due to a condition, he didn't gain weight for over 60 years. And here's a familiar face. You may remember when we visited Robert Wadlow's grave, and here he is represented in all his glory, one inch shy of nine feet tall. He has certainly become a Ripley's favorite. In all of his travels over 200 countries, Robert Ripley found something in South America that really grabbed his interest. It was the tradition of shrunken heads. He thought that they were fascinating and macabre, and since then, shrunken heads have become a staple of Ripley's auditoriums. Hot scum. It's fantastic seeing some items that Ripley himself collected, such as these wood-carved statues that he found in Rome in 1934. There are also things that came after him, such as this, the Bubble Boy vehicle, which was made for the famous Bubble Boy who wasn't able to be out without getting sick. He had a very compromised immune system. So, this was created for him by NASA, and he was actually able to get out and see the world a little bit. Very interesting to see in person. You can even see some true legendary items of the silver screen. This is the prosthetic that Marlon Brando wore in the exquisite Godfather movie. And then we have a rover that was created for the fantastic movie Armageddon. Space is often billed as the final frontier, so it comes as no surprise that it inspires a lot of creativity such as this matchstick space station here. This giant figure was created with nothing more than matchsticks. But once you get through gazing at this beauty, you can look up and see an even larger one. This is the International Space Station, completely created out of matchsticks. I think I stood here for a good 15 minutes just taking in how awesome this is. The longer you look, the more details jump out at you. We now come to animal oddities. These little guys that are still very cute, but might have been born just a bit different. As we look around the barn, several friends jump out. We have Mike, the headless chicken who lived several years without a head. We have a very cute, two-headed lamb, 
And then next to the lamb, we have a two-headed rabbit, which still looks very cuddly, and it just means that there's more of him to love, right? Then this cow standing here, and if you look at its back, you'll see that it happens to possess six legs instead of the typical four. And next to the cow, we have a crow completely made out of car parts. Not an oddity, but still very cool. Remember, when you come to a Ripley's Museum, you've got to pay close attention and look everywhere. You never know what you might find next. A few other odd animals on display are this eight-legged pup hanging out near a fire hydrant, and his good friend, the conjoined Siamese kitten, who's got plenty of milk and yarn to play with. Then we have this two-headed parrot, who I'm sure was quite a talker. I wonder if the parrot had two separate voices. And then one of my personal favorites, this guy may look like a regular squirrel, but actually is a really good fisherman. And another awesome animal to see is this majestic taxidermid lion that came back just like this with Ripley from one of his trips to Africa and sat in Ripley's study for several years. So definitely was one of his prized possessions. We've seen some wacky animals and now it's time to make one of our own. With this screen here, we get to design our own. We start out by choosing a base of an animal. Let's, let's go with a pig. So we're going to build a pig. Let's, let's give it two heads, of course. Or you know what? Antlers. And some wings. Then we're going to give it a pattern. I kind of like the original pig pattern, but let's look at the choice. Oh, cow pattern. That's pretty cool. We can do some colors. Maybe some nice blue. I like the blue. There we go. That looks good. Let's look at its eyes. You know what? Let's let him see better. He's got that third eye, kind of a mystical quality, you know? And we'll make it a little bit, oh no, we don't want, we don't want that. Let's stick with the third eye. <laughs> All right, oh, we gotta give him a collars. Everybody knows he's got a home. We got our basic one. Oh, very dapper with the bow tie. We got a bell. You know what? I think we're gonna go with the standard here. we just, you know, now nah, we're gonna go with the tie. Let's give him a bow tie. And then we're going to put him in a background. Where, where would he live? Let's say... Field's too boring for him. Ah, he doesn't look like he'd like the, the cold. There we go, a nice meadow. Looks like he's very large, so he's got the river there. Lots of stuff to eat. He'll be fine. We'll do that. And now next, he's being shipped off. And there he is. That is one weird pet, but I definitely love him. We've just uh, got to come up with a name. So if you got any suggestions of what we call this lovely creature, let me know in the comments. I think animal lovers of all shapes and sizes will find something they love here at Ripley's. Even those who love them so much that they make their caskets into animals. This snake and elephant coffins are real coffins that were used by people in their final moments just further proof that the world is an amazing place, believe it or not. Well, adventurers, that's all the time we have for today. But don't you fret. As you can see, Robert Ripley had a huge collection of oddities, and they've done nothing but collect more in the years since his passing. So as we visit all the different ones throughout the country, there are going to be plenty of oddities to come. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a like, it really helps us out, and comment where you'd like to see us go next. If you really want to get some bonus footage and a postcard in the mail every month, you can also check out our Patreon. The link is going to be directly below. We're also going to throw in a link so that you can buy tickets to come and see Ripley's for yourself and all the amazement that this place holds. My name is David, and this has been Abnormal Voyages. Thanks for tagging along. We'll see you next time.
watching